Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's a big piece. Oh, yeah, I like them when they're big. I don't like the little ones. I like the big ones. Look at his mess in Honey's bathtub. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Big How one. am I going to take a bath? That's Honey's bathtub. Oh, dear. Oh, my. No baths. No baths. Only rubble. <laughs> All right, good day, gentlemen. So I've been shooting a lot of video, but I haven't been editing a lot of video. So I haven't done any posts. I've got a sort of a simple bike video coming up. Um, I fixed a, you know, kind of $100 Walmart bike. More to the point, uh, we've been involved in um, doing the, a, a remodel that's been necessary on this house in our uh, closet, vanity, and uh, toilet shower area. And it's needed this for a long, long time. What finally broke it broke the deal and, and made us get into it was that we constantly have a slow uh tub drain uh and it's just almost impossible to get to not impossible but almost um but we have certain things that we want to accomplish and it's been uh quite the uh quite the journey over this last week and a half where i've discovered some serious problems as anticipated uh as a little bit of background we've been living in this house for 35 years we bought it new uh, we raised our kids here. They've moved out and um, You know, I know a lot about this house and we're not going anywhere. It's paid for right and we're not going anywhere So it was time to do this bathroom and get this job done So let's take a walk through and I'll tell you kind of what I've done why I've done it and a little bit about some of the problems that we've encountered and You know see where that leads and then I'll probably call this like part one and who knows what part two is going to be but um, that's what I intend to accomplish with this video is an, sort of an overview of where we're at. All right, when you do this kind of work, um, dust is a huge problem and you have to sort of accept that and know that. Uh, for example, let's have us a look here. So there's a, there's a pretty good example of sort of what you live with. The project's anticipated to take about two to three months and that's due to a lot of different reasons. Um, you know, there's availability, there's work life, there's home life, there's all these things. Let's flip some lights on. Got this whole thing down to the down to the studs. Uh, so right here we have a closet, <clears throat> a walk-in closet. Everything has been torn out. It is simply a box. The square footage, uh, or actually the dimensions, is about six and a half feet by five and a half feet. Then we have a vanity area. Uh, we'll be changing this and going from one sink. Uh, there's the feeds uh, to two, and the vanity will, of course, accommodate that. Um, and then over here is the shower area, and we'll get into this here. This is our biggest problem so far, and if you've ever watched any of my other videos, you know that plumbing in this, in this house is a problem. It's a challenge uh, at this point, I, and I actually needed professional help. I, I just didn't know enough about what I was looking at and how to, uh, how to do that. Uh, or fix the problem. So let's talk about the closet first because the first thing you have to do is, is you have to find a place to, uh, how you're going to handle your closet contents. How are you going to get dressed in the morning? Where are you going to hang your clothes, your shoes, all these things? This is a pretty small closet and um, it, it, it's almost as though when you empty it out of the closet it's like twice as big. So what I ended up doing was is I took the uh, the, the rods that were actually uh, all of our hang-up clothes were on. I measured that out. That came out to about uh, 19 feet. Uh, and what I needed to do was come up with a solution that we could uh, use that was linear, 19 feet. So, uh, as I mentioned, our, our girls uh, grew up here and they're, uh, both, they both have their own families and homes and all that. But their bedrooms are available to us. So we did some reconfig. And, um, you know, it looks like sort of like a homeless person lives here or at least a hoarder. And, uh, and I built some structures in order to accommodate our clothing. Let's go take a look at that. Okay, so this is a central bedroom uh, within our house. And, and you can see suddenly what used to be a nice, clean, sort of a pseudo office has become what looks like, you know, sort of like a garage sale. Uh, I built these two by four frames. Um, they're just uh, eight footers, right? Those two bys haven't been uh, cut down in any fashion. And, you know, I made a box. I put feet on them. Right, you know, kind of like that, and then slid this. Um, uh, this is uh, electrical wire conduit. It's all pretty cheap. I think for, for like fifty bucks or something in there, I was able to get this all done. I had to add a little bit of a support here. You could probably do a better job with that, but it, it holds the clothing. So we have a total of sixteen linear feet here, and of course shoes are you know just kind of all stacked all over everything, and 
you know, all the crap that just doesn't have a place to go has now been stored in this room. So it's fairly easy. And if I go through here, of course, we had to give ourselves a little bit of walking room uh, so we can get to our clothes. And that's how we're doing it. And it works, right? It's pretty inconvenient. It's not, you know, what you're used to. I get that. But you got to do something with this stuff. Okay, so back to the closet. <clears throat> um, we want a different configuration, and we've looked at it on paper. We've been cussing and discussing all those design decisions that need to be made. And I, what I'm going to do later on this afternoon is, is that I'm going to create a sort of a stick structure in here, right? I want to come up with something that sort of resembles where we might put some things. And I'm just going to do that basically with scrap wood, probably take some two buys and rip them down into two by two uh, pieces and start to get some uprights going, right? You know, up right here, maybe an up right here and do, do our cross members so that we can actually feel the way it looks or, or feel the way um, the closet presents itself. And will we be able to actually get uh, our clothes in and out the way we want? Um, we're gonna add shelving. We're gonna put that up pretty high. This is a really tiny closet as far as uh, walk-ins go. So, um, we're gonna have to have like maybe a little ladder or something like that is what I envision for my wife because she's real you know real short. I, I can touch the ceiling right, so I can get up there. It's not a big deal for me, um, but for her we gotta have to do something different. So we're gonna experiment sort of with this um, with this structure that I want to build, and I don't want to take a lot of time with it. But give us the overall look and feel. We would like an industrial look, probably with some pipe or maybe some metal. I can do quite a bit with that. And um, in, in terms of what, you know, actually happens finally in all these rooms is, you know, what can I actually do, right? What do I have the actual capability to do? So that has to be considered with all of our design decisions, all right? Yeah, excuse me while I take yet another spam call. Unbelievable, right? Thank you for choosing Visa MasterCard. I mean, people, I don't know what you're thinking. Okay, a couple of major changes are going to happen here. I am six foot one, right? Let's see if I can get the camera right so that we don't blind you guys. And if I'm standing in my tub, if I'm standing in my tub here taking a shower, you will notice that my shoulders are visible through this sort of this fogged window, which is completely trashed and, and it's, it's going to go. Uh, I don't like that, right? What I ended up doing is I take a lot of showers in the dark. I, I don't like to be backlit in, in sort of my silhouette or, you know, me scrubbing my hair or picking my nose, whatever, right? I don't want that visible to the outside world. And it kind of is, you know, yeah, I'm fogged over, I get it, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to put glass block and we're going to move this up by about a foot, right? And that will, uh, that's because we're uh, space constrained. We can't do, you know, too much. If you look up here at the top, and I'll try again not to blind you with this uh, light, there, there's space up there, but the problem is, is that the roof line comes to the top of the window. So that is our absolute uh, top height that we can go. And we've got some ideas about what we're going to do with the additional um, cover-up. So this will all be uh, reframed, and we'll get rid of that. We'll have a glass block window here, right? So this is all going to be here. The electricity will all move. Um, we're going to do sort of these barn door uh, on the outside here. We're going to do this barn door sliding thing. I have to reinforce up top to hang these things. We'll put them on both the closet and the vanity. And uh, the electricity will have to be moved over at the... I've done tons and tons of plumbing work. I hate it. I don't like anything about it. And it's always a problem. So what we have here is a hole. Um, the tub used to be in this space right here. The drain was sort of rigged up here, right? This is where the tub drain would be. And there was this snaky piece of pipe and it came over and it went down into this waste hole. Uh, this waste hole is, is actually plugged or at least slow running it at the very least. Uh, what I want to do is, is I wanted to pull that piece out, get it all the way back to the uh, the pooper chute here, and then reroute it and have it come more to the middle because we'll tile up and you know end up with the drain somewhere in the middle here. Wash tool with a chisel bit. Hit a copper pipe. <laughs> we have no water to the house now. Take a look. It, wherever it went, it is just drained out. The, the channel was full, right? And I, I now see, now that you know everything is calmed down, I see a, uh, I see a little bit of tape. And 
Now it's going to be just like the last time I did all this work is to unearth that pipe and I'm gonna have to sweat that together with some kind of a, I don't know, some kind of a sleeve of some sort. I was getting ready to quit for the day, right? I've got myself another, I'll bet you it's gonna be three hours worth of work. Unbelievable. We have no water to the house. I had to go run out in the front and shut it off. Unbelievable. Why would the copper run over here, right? Why would it do that? Fuck. As a point of reference um, to get rid of all this stuff, really, what does it actually take? Uh, it took me two f uh, full trips of, of my pickup truck to get that to the uh, dump. I still have the tub, the toilet, and a cabinet that just I couldn't get it to fit. So total of three trips to the dump uh, to get rid of all this junk. Uh, for me, the tile is always the most problematic to, to move, right? Because it turns into rubble. Uh, and then it's like, what do you do? Well, what I did was is that I uh, hauled that out in five gallon buckets. Uh, what I've done in the past was use a whole bunch of little boxes and then I dumped that rubble into those boxes in my pickup truck and sort of stacked it and then just pitched the boxes up full of rubble into the, uh, the hole that they have for us over at the, um, at the solid waste treatment or solid waste um, uh, facility. Uh, this time I could only I only had like one large box man. It was a nightmare. Right? don't do that <laughs> I had to I had to like almost like hand pick it out of the box and fill a bucket and then dump and it just took me uh, Quite a bit a while longer. So, you know, that's how you sort of like get rid of this stuff um, And it's a it's a whipping you know, but you know, you just take it one at a time and just keep on going